afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting, riveting, amazing propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane, a master of propaganda, hero of sight, defender of the fatherland, off here to one versus one on Holotni Farama in the west. It is Kawagizi fighting for the Oba Command West, Germany, Deutschland, rolling out here with the 10th Panzer Division in the east. It is Forest fighting with the Soviet Union, Socialism, Comrade Stalin, taking on the role here of the 6th. Guards, tank core here with tank hunter, guard rifle and guard motor, triple infantry versus cover geese with special operations, grand offensive and overwatch with triple infantry there, we got double false guns there for cover geese, special rifle command side here for 4S, oh, no apologies for the hiccups, two spinning westwards there, points there being secured, stone pioneers moving in, false gun it is, setting out there as well for cover geese. So we'll probably sing a scout car. No, penal troops like and then follow up with a scout car here. No, he actually goes for conscripts. He goes for conscripts. You'd figure with a special rifle command, he's going to go for some penal troopers. But certainly with the upgrade here, the mobilized reserves ability, there's been an increase in conscript plays, even versus the Oba Commando Vest. So, I mean, conscripts are definitely gained a lot of favor, though it's not like stream. I think penal troopers have completely gone out of play. But, you know, conscript strategies, I think, have become, uh, well, less fraught with peril for a lot of players. More folks on the way there for Kawagisi, so far no sign of what doctoral choice he might be making versus his opponent. Contra then making a swift move here, or folks can make a swift move for the car point there, Contra's a busy down south here. Third Fulton squad there, halfway done, sat part way up here by the munitions point, grabbing the point here, very good, very good. Sandbags going down there to help defend against enemy meters, so it counterattacks here. But quickly, there we go, the counterattack is in already here from 4S, ready to try and stop the fascist swine from the... Uh, Doing you know that naughty dirty business, but there you go. Still has made support here, leaving Fordes's cover point in a pretty perilous situation. Going for more conscripts there. So again, why well, went for an early special rifle command? Can also get more infantry out faster. Is a bit, uh, a bit of a quandary. A riddle with guns and socialism. Moving here for the cover point. We can see that Fordes of course looking to disrupt his opponent. He could try of course keep attacking into, but more likely might want to choose basically just look to bait out Kawagisa from it. Meanwhile, just keeping up pressure else, which I think is sort of the better move. We're going to try and go for a deep flank and try and surprise him. Though, of course, that also has its risks since we're heading blind into the enemy territory. But again, if his opponent doesn't anything there, he could surprise him that way, sort of dislodge him. So there are a few options here for Forest. And of course, the uh, final one is just to attack head on and I'll assume that Kawagisi is just being to fall back here a bit, which is apparently what he's doing here. I mean, that can also work. That can also work. Scout car following up here for Forest. So he went for a base for the Scout car, which is still something the Obok Commander struggles with. Unless, of course, they do go for Panzer Fuzzlies, in which case the early Panzer Fuzzlies do get access to anti tank rifle grenades, which can deal with uh, the Scout Car, but so far, Kawagisi has not gone for it. So I'll be interested to see where that goes. More folks on the way there for Kawagisi. Seizing the point here. Rather bunched up, which can happen. Of course, in most cases, it won't have anything. But in theory, you know, a single explosion there could do some critical damage. So they see not a grenade from this angle. Little fun note there, comes coming in again, full scan is there, crossing into the cut negative car, still too many there to really do any serious damage, well that's a matter really, because the country is going to push back the full scan is, so four here is, four is here mastering for a sizable counter attack, and there we go, we got the M31 in there, it's flame for engineers on the way there as well, very standard Soviet combo, truck out there for Kawagisi, could be mechanized here, I mean he does have spec cops, we haven't seen any on the stock toy choices, of course, he could go for Belgrup headquarters. Oh, he does. He does go for Belgrup headquarters. An uh, interesting move there. I mean, special operations, I think, is less likely to happen. It's not impossible, but it's just slightly less likely to happen, since usually that one is just very much part of a increasingly just very orthodox sort of build. Or again, just, you know, get a bunch of folks because got mechanized revving. It looks Puma. Belgrup headquarters, medics. Then, you know, command Panther. But... With this, there's certainly a chance that Kawagisi might be playing at something else. I mean, we'll still end up going for special operations, but it seems less likely it's a command pad for stall. It's a grand offensive or oh, overwatch, oh, but at the same time, I feel like he'd be right to go for grand offensive without going for it sooner. Then again, have you seen some players that just basically just go for it for single Panzer for the squad? Basically just using them as an anti-tank team. And that's obviously also very much an option there for uh, Kawagisi just to do that. So we'll have to see what it ends up with. We've got Consequently Head here, Grand Points here. And up north, of course, Fortis is disrupting Kawagisi's fuel income. 
probably in case you know, he does try and play for Luxlang and the field income there of course is going to be pretty big but again he's not so uh, for this he could find himself a bit surprised by Carl Giza's moves he could find himself a bit surprised Fulton's is moving up there bit of uh, France standing about here troops in reinforcing Fulton they're pursuing the scout car and of course with the, the battle group headquarters up he has access to Panzerfausts and interesting enough he actually goes for a Panzer Shrek on the Sturm Pioneers can't say I anticipated that one, but there we are. Molotov's up here for Kawagizi. Not for Kawagizi, but for S. My ball is there. Only thing in our lax first card is acting anti tank grenades. Not that he's in the meeting. And oh, the scout car went down there to the Panzer Jake there, the Raket and Panzerbuchse, leaving the scout car smoldering wreck and leaving several Soviet soldiers quite dead. Machine gun following up here for Kawagisi, of course, having knocked out for S. The scout car doesn't have to worry much about vehicles for the time being, so he can focus more on just murdering infantry. Of course, he can only get away with that for so long before you know four S hits him with a light tank. And there you go, quick Van Hankenada there, tossed over the fence, and the hedges, bit of it both, and lights the place a bit on fire here. Fulton moving from the other side, not into their grenade. We'll be seeing any molotovs here for four S. Constantly, they need to get out of there fast because they're dying out fast. Kansk was routed, tank tank command up there for Fortis, very good. Back here we got a light infantry gun. See, Kans was the MD-34, goes for light infantry gun. He said, that's an interesting choice there. I mean, Fortis has a lot of infantry. It's not like he has a lot of sort of support weapons. I mean, that's not to say the light infantry gun is bad against that. Okay, now he's going for the MD-34 again. It seems like Kawagisi here perhaps is suffering from a bit of indecision. Can't quite decide what he wants to go for. Or perhaps he's trying to weigh out what potential options Fortis could go against him. And so it ends up with it. It's a bit hard to say exactly. I ends up with that, but there you are. There you are. Force is doing what they can. Troops sending out, healing. Comes flying around there, Force is taking a bit of light hammering up here. Back here, troops healing enforcing for Forest and the Red Army. Contra there versus the Fulz Grenadiers. Charging here, that's not a bit of good engagement. In fact, he could risk losing the conscripts. No, in this case, it does bait Kawagisi out of the car. It means he doesn't get quite as many accurate shots there. And that just, I think, gives him the chance to survive. So that was always a bit of a risky move there to be on to Forest. And he got lucky there that Kawagisi kind of took the bait. Anyways, he could go for a half check right now, equipped with the AA mount. But he's likely not to go for that. He's going to go for the T-70. Kawagisi and Forest, by the way. So far, remaining without doctrines. I mean, he could go for tank hunt. He's got plenty of conscripts, at least a quick few with them. Who knows? He could pull off the same stuff that Lenford does with his anti tank conscripts. He could, of course, also use to go for guard rifle, guard motor, just call in some regular guardsmen. He's got plenty of missions there as well, and some DP light machine guardsmen right now would be very difficult for Kawagi to deal with just with large amounts of um, Basic full skin of these, you know, no upgrades or anything like that, no additional weaponry. So, I mean, Gasman with deep light machines would be quite unpleasant here for Kavagisi's full skin of these. We got mines up here, and you feel for there being slowly hot forward to back up the assault mortals off here against Kavagisi's full skin of these. They're very good. Back here, healing enforcement. T7 is not far off the forest. But note, of course, here that Kavagisi's been doing quite good work and denying forest a lot of resources, still stalling his economy. And showing that you know you can't hit him with a fast T70. I mean, he's going to hit him with the zoom. It's going to be roughly around the 10 to 11 minute market hits. Which point, I mean, that's going to be a bit of a late uh, T70. Of course, four races can return the favors. It's not like Kawagis can hit with a fast vehicle as well. In particular, you know, he's not going for a battle or mechanized rating at the moment. So in this regard, now the players are really going to be pushing any sort of uh, decisive arm advantages fast. Of course, Ford is still going to get a T-70 faster, but just not as fast as he could get it. We'll have to see what how Kavagisa responds to that one. So he, oh, he's going for a Kevin of Sans, the Panzer Shake Sturm Pioneers. I mean, that'll help, but he needs to fight for his own fuel as well. Of course, this could become his fuel in the south. And you fit for hamming wave, I can have halfway done, T70 halfway done as well there for Ford as comes to their flanking up behind the Fulton Committee, threatening here the flank of Kabagis' assault on the south. And we got the line gun there blasting away, though it's actually a bit perilous here. The northern exposed flank, that's Sturm Pioneers moving up there, Pantrick and Sturm Pioneers. 
Oh, that's sort of rifles, not stealing pioneers, that's weapons. Comes with there being routed by the folks in the deers and the stealing pioneer. Three kills then, there we go. T70 out here for 4S. The T70 was a very interesting tank in a lot of ways. It was in part a tank that was basically meant to combine two previous tanks, the T50 and the T60, which was a reconnaissance tank and an infantry support tank. Roughly had the same chassis, just you know, some slight differences here and there, so we'd be able to you know, pull both roles. It was also reasonably expensive, and very importantly, it wasn't actually built because it was good, it was built because they had to build something while they were sort of shifting production lines and everything else they were doing in the initial stages of the war. So it's sort of a funny little tank in a sense. Though of course in game is an absolute menace. But you know, a little fun note there. Pantrick then only a nice hit on the T70, an actual Pantrick probably would have knocked it out though. So you know that's an 88mm rocket and those hurt. Troops are healing and forcing. But again, that would be very difficult to balance in game, in particular some of the smaller maps. I mean, that's saying all those things to keep in mind there. Eh? And there we go, got got rifle. That means got a rifle men will most likely DP light machine guns. Forest probably could benefit from a lot more mines. You mean your flare mines there? Trip wire flares. Which I think was an overall common strategy to use, though mostly just also just bat wire lines here and there. I think the Germans did the same. You know, someone tries to creep up, cut the wire, you know, sets it off, and then you know, good lord. I think they also did it with mines actually as well. They did something there. Can't quite remember where I read it, but I think there's something going on there with tripwire flares and mines. Also on the German side, a lot of ways used to booby trap things really. Can't be moving out there. PPS 41 submachine guns. So he's certainly going to put to hard here versus Kalgisi. Comes there, they're taking damage here from folks being focused down to Germans. Balls John in. We got the Tsun attack here. There you go. Nice push here by Forrest. Kalgis is in all the position there, he's being slowly reinforced with more and more troops as he realizes what's going on here. But can it be enough here? Comes to the close game right, but they do retreat in the center. Troops moving up there as well. Basil is meowing in the background. Bit of shooting there from the T70 as well. Sniping at a distance here where we can sort of safely just murder the folks going to this. Good work there by Forrest. Routing them away there, but Kevin can't join in. We got a truck out here that's landing in the Sriap Hunted Cortis. Still no sign of docks in there from Kawagizi. Okay, enough for shooting here, and there you go, Shriar Panther quarters up. Not the way he's positioning it, though he could have, you know, set it out differently, in which case the gun would be more easy to target. He actually has to sort of spend a few seconds just turning to deal with the target, which can occasionally act in matter, but that's just a little detail there. Troops are reinforcing, T's are moving towards the center. Concepts are northwards there, Basil continuing to go meow. He wants a bit of attention now. <laughs> no, Basil, my arm is not a toy. We've been through this. Folks in the fight from the T semi got more stream guys on the way there for Kawagisi. And you feel for sitting up, Shriap Hunted Quarters almost done there. T's in the team hit from the Kedmiff, except like Kedmiff is mostly hitting boxes and not Soviet tanks. And there you go, comes right here by the Shriap Hunted Quarters. The third semi of a flat there, swiveling about to open up. Back here, another wave of infantry out there from Kawagisi's base. Still no doctrine, though. Choice there yet. Not entirely sure what he's playing. He has to full rest. I imagine he might want to go for mechanized ammo. He's also floating a lot of manpower. Again, get some guardsmen out of there and say full rest. And maybe build a fuel cache and just quickly pull for more tanks over Kawagisi. Hang on. Cat is playing with stuff he's not supposed to, specifically cables. He likes to do that at times because he's a little bastard. Anyways. Playing a bit with him now, while also casting. Stuart and Pioneer's forces moving up, T70 falling a bit back. Comes there being routed by the Stuart and Pioneer's, troops are healing and forcing. Conscripts heading northwards. Ooh, that season is doing a great job this time. The Sturm Pani has almost got them wiped out. In fact, that's a pretty bad development for Kawagisi. I mean, he would benefit maybe for some orbs on that game. He's already managing a lot of infantry, so he may want to wait. But, you know. All right, there we go. We got a doctrinal choice. Rather late in a... Now he's going for Panzer for Zaleas. It's just us for six infantry squads. I'm guessing he wants them for the Panzer Strix, but even then it feels a bit late here. 
But I mean, it does help him more successfully pull what he wants to, but... Is he then going for a Tiger Tank now? I mean, that'd be interesting, I guess. A Command Tiger Soul here then from Kawagisi. We'll have to see that sexy how it pans out. We will have to see if that's how it pans out. Looks like the RP is going to open the T-70, doing some light damage there. In the south, we got the Focus there, ground the southern victory point. We got 373 versus 380. So also they're heading back for some reinforcement and healing since they're in bad need of it. And yeah, Panzer X on the way there for the Panzer Fusiliers. Back here, healing reinforcement. Comscope's laying down some tripwire flare mines up there. Very good, very good. I think at least it doesn't look like sandbags. Jesus is trying in the south, a very good movement. In the center, got pushed through as well. A lot of infantry being mobilized here by Kawagisi in the center, follow up with like Kedna from the MD 34. He's close to the Panther 4, but again, he's playing with the command tiger, obviously. Oh, playing for it. He's gonna not go for that. So that's a lot of infantry Kawagisi has. I mean, six infantry scores. There's definitely a good chance of losing something at some point, since a lot of players can struggle to manage that much infantry, and it certainly sort of is the uh, max level of infantry I'd recommend. Even then, again, you're kind of pushing your luck. Though again, I'm not to say, you know, Kamigishi might not be able to do this, just I don't think it's something most players can do, but there's not always going to be any exceptions to the rule. Exceptions to the rule. Basil seems pretty content. Puzzles there going for the T center, pushing it back there with a few nice hits. Over here, troops healing and forcing for Fortress and the Six Guards Tank Corps. Consuming ahead here. Comes with charging in there, a bit risky then again with the Panthers there with the Panthers being first line there, go hitting the dirt and popping them all so he does manage to actually pull a route there. Pretty close there by 4S, could have gone a bit ugly but in this case managed to pan out. And certainly rushing up then hitting the dirt with submachine gun comes which can be a surprisingly effective tactic at times of course. You gotta sort of learn how and when and not to pull it as well because obviously you can occasionally risk getting a unit entirely wiped without doing much there. Basil pairing contently. T-54, some 6 for 4 days. He's still flooding a bit of manpower. And he hasn't inch enough gone for any guards. And so far, he's just using the doctrine for sub machine guns. Which, I mean, is nice. I mean, we've seen some players who just go for the doctrine for the guardsmen. But never the cons give sub machine guns. And now we've got an, uh, some chap actually doing the opposite. So that's interesting. But it certainly makes it interesting again then. I mean, he's going for cons a full conscript build versus the Orbital Command of Essen. He doesn't even use the mobile reserves for the sub machine gun. I mean... Fallers is definitely uh, making some bold maneuvers, and so far it seems like to be paying off. They're certainly showing what you can do with conscripts. In the south, here, T-Sling pushes back a Sturm Pioneer squad. Note several flare mines there from uh, Fallers. Conscript, there's a lot of folks coming in. He's got more lots of than the Tenor Grenades being chucked off, but in the end, the conscripts had to fall back. They're yeah, simply outnumbered. Simply outnumbered. Take up there for Fortis, making our stomach company up very good. He can go, f and in fact, has already gone for T 34 from 6. And meanwhile, Kavagisi is clearly on the path here for the Tiger Tank. The Tiger 1. T 75 way falls with him now under fire here from the T 34 from the 6. The late model T 34 from the 6, you can tell from the chart, was a sort of more hexagonal and also had the two hatches there, which also the Germans called Mickey Mouse's because you then both have popped up. It sort of gave the sort of the silhouette of Mickey Mouse if Mickey Mouse was a Soviet tank. T 75 away there. But there were a lot of improvements there between the early T 34 and the late T 34 from the 6. Many. Including, for example, it didn't blind the crew when it were fired, which was definitely a bit of an issue. Playing for us, they're dealing with the light infantry gun. Also, fun fact about the T 34 from the 6, it actually used aluminum engines. You might ask why is that important? Well, because the usual reputation of the T 34 from the 6 is it was cheap. The thing is, aluminum engines were not cheap. You might ask, how do you know that? Because it was too expensive for the damn Germans, and they made the Tigers and the King Tigers. If they found aluminum engines to be too damn expensive, then you know, you know they're expensive. Of course, it had its advantages to use that, but you know, just a little fun note there. Now, 
Venisa Club's being wiped out. Bit risky there by Fores. And... Wiped. Of course, he's already got nothing useful. He's getting more. That's very good. But right now, Kalgisi's Tiger Plan is running into a few snags. I mean, it's not all bad, but... He's not having a super easy time of it either in terms of map control. Of course, Forest is paying a bit of a price there for it, but, you know, the more map control, the better before he gets hit by a Tiger tank. And at this point, he's likely anticipating. I mean, he's seen the Panzer Valiers. He knows his opponent, you know, thus has gone for Grand Defense, but he's seen absolutely bugger all else. I mean, the Tiger tank is very likely. It's not really a strategy you see a lot of in 1 versus 1s. It may likely see more using 2 versus 2 games, and by team games, and even any question of one player to be supporting the other very actively leaving some gaps here, but you know, one versus one is a bit of a rare strategy, not impossible and all that, but you know, a bit rare, full of the white. Man with all falls, I think, killing a few Soviet infantrymen there. And taking a flare. That kind of looks like he's trying to dig a grave for that fascist who's already dying. Don't worry, fascist, I'll dig your grave, please. Help me <laughs> yet. I'll dig your grave and I'll toss you in it. Sturm Panzer got backed up by the Fulks Grenadiers. Back here, troops are living forcing. Shroud Punted Quarters there, silent. But we are close to the Tiger Tank here, the Command Tiger Tank. And we got the K1 on the way there for Fortis, the Clement British Level 1 tank. Fuel Cash out there for Fortis. Thumbs out there, very nice. T sending southwards there, eventually two. Need to be careful here though. Pretend we got the Panzer again, but yeah, get a lot of Panzer I mean, you got the Panzer you got the Sturm Panzer That's three Panzer Sigs up for cover, easy. Last time you'd see that many Panzer Sigs on the uh, Noble Command Vest Forces, usually when you know they could be added to the Fultz Grenadiers. Back here, troops are enforcing, and there you go, Tiger Tank available here for cover, easy. And the German Army, the 10th Panzer D. Short. Occurring still, and there you go. Panzer's being hit. The Panzer's landing a few hits. T7 is using territory. Nice use the ability there by Fordes. Well, let's see if he goes for the house at any point. He's also still filling map. I'm surprised he hasn't gone for any guardsmen though. None at all. I mean, that's definitely unusual. But there you go. Kavagis making push. They probably should not be leading it with a. Uh, very weak Fulton Deer Squad. I feel like that's just tempting fate here. He's looking to clear up some population, with maybe some orbs will die. I don't think some orbs are doing good, but there you go. T-54 taking a penetrating hit, or getting a penetrating on the Tiger Tank. K-1 nearby, comes from hit there. Tiger Tank shoots, penetrates, got two kills on the so far. KV-1 takes hit from the Kedden, to treat that one. Tiger Tank shoots, misses. The Kedden of a crew wiped out quite a blow there to Kawagisi. Comes from hit there, Tiger shoots, misses. Troops being suppressed here, but then you've got four backing up. Panzer is moving up with the Panzer X. Ready to blow apart any Bolshevik tanks. Troops being pinned down there. Tiger tank continues to try and murder away there. We're going to scout call on the way for Forest. That's an interesting choice there. T-54, they help back from the punches on the flank. There you go. Country being routed here. Forest finding his front line. Crumbling those men in the northern field point, which uh, is what's undefended there. The Shriar Punch quarters can't cover it. I wonder why a scout car, I mean... That's the option, it was a misclick, and he's just preoccupied with everything else to get it, but otherwise, I'm not entirely sure we'd go for a scout car. I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out. And the t falls ramming the Tiger Tank. Not entirely sure what's up with that, though. I guess he's just trying to frustrate Kalgis and then damage his engine. Maybe trying to force him to retreat here by, you know, threatening with more stuff to come. Does seem to be working here. Kyle Geese not realizing he's pushed his target tank too fast. Now beginning to try and extract it. We've got Panzer Division up here to cover against any pursuing armor, though uh, infantry might be a bit of a problem. They've got an MG for four there. But Ken has yet to recruit. Then again, he's not got a lot to recruit with. In fact, that's all moving out from the base. Panzer is about to get wiped out as well. T7 there murderily sniping away there. And there you go. Tiger tank stops. A full on counter assault there by Forrest as he kind of bunched them out a bit too much. And go T7 stopping the MG34, causing a bit of grievous harm there, closing him at T3. And the South Force is advancing, hitting a flare mine there, losing poor Otto. MG44 being 
We'll route it and Titan it shoots away. We got Veterans 1 on it, 13 kills. He could try and pop Command Tiger. The thing is, I've yet to see anyone try and do that. I suspect it's because most people don't want to, you know, sacrifice the Tiger's firepower. I guess the question is, how do you sort of set it up then for good push? But, like, theoretically, it could be good in particular. Betsy 2, though, it could be uh, pretty solid. Since you know, more range and accuracy is always a good thing. I mean, you know, say you got it working together, a couple of Panzer Fours, that could really devastate infantry, for example, which might then, you know, compensate for the loss of the Tiger Tank's own rate, you know, rate of fire and such. Flares being laid down there. I mean, he's really laying down a lot there, which is impressive. They're still also funding a bunch of manpower, which I'm less of a fan of. Passing well, it's a fan of sleeping on my lap and my left hand. Since I move it now, he's just going to tumble down from the chair and onto the floor. The silly little cat is now not being a bastard because he's asleep. Goes right in there, like into the line of fire of the tiger tank. Which of course was also really expensive to make. Roughly for you know one Titan could probably have made like four or five Panzer Fours. Even a bunch of Panthers. The other psychological effect of the Tiger Tank was uh, quite notable on the enemy, though of course uh, actual combat work was perhaps not quite as much as the psychological shock on the enemy. But anyways, Tiger Tank going ahead here. Going to check for the K1, close to Veterans 1 there. Slowly approaching to on the Tiger Tank. No, no smoke bombs being used. At least he's beginning to use more abilities, but not a ton. Also surprised didn't go for the Panzer Command and the Command Tiger here around the Pinlock machine gun. Scout cut in nearby. That feels like he went for it like a mistake. I mean, he just sent it in there more or less to die. So it definitely feels like Forrest, for whatever reasons, accidentally called it in and didn't realize it was still so late. Gun Nation 5 tanks right there for Forrest. <laughs> Based off the T-54 chassis, and they would be slightly elongated later with the H-5M, which would, was basically they made that one because they couldn't quite get the guns ready for the issue 100, so they kind of came up with the H-5M as a sort of intermediate solution until they got the issue 100 ready, which was sort of well, 1945. A little fun fact there. Close them to fire. Confident charging in. T-Sun is sniping some really good hits there. Huge catch there to the folks. We've got 31 kills on that T-70. 31, that's impressive. Or horrifying if you're a German player. Absolutely horrifying. The stuff of nightmares. T-Tiger Tank going to head backed up by infantry. Going to the issue 5. Oh, yeah, apparently popped to command Tiger, I think, at some point. Though, looking at the average Orbital Commandos play, I'm guessing it was an accident. I mean, those things do happen. You might have been hoping to press another hotkey, or just you know, clicked on by accident. I don't know all the way, though. I suspect that was an, you know, accidental click. Still, Forrest is in good control. Kawagisi is uh, struggling to make any gains. We finally got Gasman out there heading northwards there for Forrest and the six guards of St. Court. Those folks don't stand a chance here. They already learn health numbers. The Gasman, well, obviously, are Gasman with DP light machine gun. Side tank need repairs again. We got double stone pioneer squads on for cover geese up with repairs. Not a bad choice. But he definitely also needs some more armor to bag up the Tiger Tank. Yak Panzer could be an idea. Just another Panzer IV. <clears throat> Would be interesting to see how a command tank in it, you know. Above the Yak Panzer's range, like how far can I then sort of shoot away from that? You still need something to spot for the Yak Panzer to make full use of it. That'd be something interesting as well. Following Norfolk, so they seem to have hit a mine in the process. And Basil has now relocated himself to my neck. Forest holding in the center strong. We've also got air support ready here for Forest. Forest are making the push, and there he goes straight into the grenade. Oh, he managed to stop short of it, but still loses Heinz. Right, if you got 331 versus 173 there. Seizing the southern point here with the Panzer for the squad. Tiger tanks hanging out there for Kawagizi. Guardsmen routed. 
recover Shadow leaving the console there in a pretty exposed position as the Tiger tank, which is very close to Vegeta 2. If you can hear. Shot missed. Air support called in here by Fortis. He could pop the ability in the trap on course, trying to shoot it down. Some players remember that, but you still get players who just forget the ability exists in the first place. Tiger tank in towards the center here. 23 kills, Vegeta 2, which of course boosts the command tiger ability there. Almost got the kill of the crew there. 25 kills on the tiger tank, that's uh, not bad. 34 then tight. T7 there go going for the shrap punter quarters, living cover geese in a uh, bit of a tricky spot here. Titan needs to deal with that, but even then. I mean he could try and flank up here, though it's gonna be risky, but at the same time just charging in onto the H5 is also pretty risky. We got another K1 away there for Fortis. Nope, the tie tank is just going elsewhere. Spotting a fuel cache here. Pretty much just sacrificing the shroud punter calls also meaning he's not gonna have any support for the tiger tank in terms of armor, meaning. He could very well risk just being swarmed by tanks and lose the tire tank that way. Depending on high hands of the tire tank, of course, how Fortis handles his armor. Shot fired, 32 kills. I mean, Fortis certainly is being courteous there towards Kawagisi, ensuring his men are the easiest targets possible for the tire tank. Which, you know, if someone were to find out, might pass on to Nostavka. Kirmanev stalling, Comrade Fortis keeps punching up his men, making them easy target for fascist high explosive shells. He may want to go to the gulags, but he's afraid to admit he wants to go there. Well, we actually got it again. Seems like a weird time for it. Again, I'm guessing this is a bit of a misclick because the time makes always no sense, and he has just, you know, earning his tiger, and there you go. Tiger down. Victory there for Fortis. Oh, smoke bombs just a bit late in the end. And there you go. Game over. A loss there for Kawagisi. A victory for Fortis. A nice little battle there with a lot of bat and force, a lot of fuel harassment. But in the end, there, I feel like Kawagisi shouldn't have gone straight for the Tiger Tank. I mean, he obviously wanted to, and that's can in some cases, I guess, work out. But I feel like the strategy just lacked a bit of cohesiveness. I think he should have aimed for like a Panzer IV first, then gone for the Tiger Tank. Maybe some Orbital to back things up. And, you know, some other bits here and there. But there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match though. Hope you learned something from it. It's, you know, support, like, share, comment. And, you know, if you want to, donate or pledge on Patreon. That's got big thanks to Dion for donating and support the Propaganda Cast. Helping you to keep doing this day after day. And thank you all for joining in. Hope you all are one for audience. Hope you all tomorrow again for another episode. Bye.